It's time to dive into another Netflix teen rom-com, because you guys seem to really like it when I cover these, and YouTube seems to really like it when I cover these, and nothing makes me feel more of an alpha male than tearing into a piece of media of which I'm not even remotely the target demographic. So let's do this. In case you were wondering, I'm wearing this hat because I have a rather nasty spot on my face and I thought I'd save you all the horrors, for I am merciful. Also, uh, if you're going to be criticising a teen movie, it's not really a good look. This one's been recommended to me a whole bunch of times, including by my own sister, although she liked Sierra Burgess as a loser, so what does she know? So, as ever, my expectations were extremely low. But I'm not going to lie, having watched it, I was a bit disappointed. It of course stars Noah Centineo, who seems to be in most of these awful teen rom-coms because without him they'd lose 97% of their audience. This time he's a senior year high school student, because they're always senior year high school students, who creates an app to help raise money for college. What a loser! Everybody knows that all the money is in mobile games. Like today's sponsor. Oh yes boys and girls, it's ad time. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, wait. I know what you're thinking. Because it's what I'd be thinking. But I did actually play this one before I agreed to do this. And it's actually pretty good. I was immediately impressed by its presentation. From the graphics and UI to the music and voice acting, it's all top-notch. In terms of its scope, it's easily comparable to the big RPGs you'd find on PC or consoles. And it's certainly one of the most ambitious RPG projects of this year. Fight your way through a single player campaign, dungeons, PvP battles, and even full on clan wars, using the hundreds of champions that are available to collect, customize, and control. My favorite's Kale, because he's a wizard. And I'm almost a wizard. The true fans will understand that one. I've been having a lot more fun with this game than I thought I would, to be honest. I found that it's pretty good for, like, being on public transport, or in social situations. You know, when you just don't want to talk to people. But don't just take my word for it. Raid has an almost perfect score on the Play Store, from over 200,000 reviews. And with a player base of over 10 million players and growing, you'll never have to worry about not having any friends. And you know what the best part is? It's free! And for new players, there's a new rewards program that gives you a new daily login reward for the first 90 days you spend in the game. So get playing by clicking on the link in the video description and pinned comment, and you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic level champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. And thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video, because YouTube sure as hell wouldn't. Alright, back to the video. It's not as bad as Sierra Burgess or The Kissing Booth, in the sense that it doesn't reach the levels of a lazy rip-off of classic literature awkwardly forced into a modern setting, thanks to the 5,000 people who pointed that out to me in the comments, or of a 15-year-old's original story on Wattpad. That's a pretty low bar to beat, to be fair. But while it's not as bad as either of those, it's so derivative and cliché that it's really boring, and even for people who like this sort of film, it's a complete waste of time. But I still managed to find enough things to complain about and take the piss out of in order to justify this video. And the ad revenue. It begins with our hero doing his college application for Yale, making sure to do all the usual pretentious bull you have to do in these applications. I invoke this lesson daily in my current profession. Purveyor of the culinary arts. But he gets called out on this and told that he needs to do something actually interesting to distinguish himself. Because he really wants to get into Yale for some reason. Aside from Yale being in the Ivy League and therefore prestigious, it's not explained why he wants to go there in particular. Sierra Burgess wanted to get into Stanford because that's where her dad went, but he wants to go to Yale... because? If you're going to make this the driving motivation for the plot, maybe give us something more specific? When he gets home, we're introduced to his father, who looks like Louis C.K. but with more cholesterol and depression. I'm just hoping they don't take the similarities too far. I mean, there are kids watching. Louis wants him to go to Yukon, where he works, so he wouldn't have to pay fees. But Noah's got his heart set on Yale. Yukon is like the girl down the street who eats food in bed and smells like it. Patty Munchrath. I love Patty, she's fantastic, but she's not. Yale. Ouch! What the fuck, man? That's so mean! Yeah, Dad, your university's and your 
and I hate you, and I wish you were dead, and I'm glad mum left you. Now I understand why he eats so much. Noah goes to his job at a royalty-free version of Subway, an experience which will no doubt come in handy for the actor's future career after he turns 25. He tells his friend about how his dad is a loser and how his mum ran away, but he's fine with it because he doesn't like this town either. This guy's a f***ing dreamboat, am I right? A douche comes in and moans about having to take his cousin to a dance because he'd much rather be pounding some pussy. And since this isn't Alabama, he can't do both. Noah says that he'll take her in exchange for the money the douche would have been paid for the task, and for the chance to drive the flashy car the douche teased him with earlier. He can't resist the possibility of getting his dick moist, so he agrees. You're getting paid to take a girl on a date. So? Did you know that Michelle Obama got paid to go on a date with Barack? And look how great that turned out. Is that true? I don't know, I'm not a presidential historian, but it could be true. And that is my point. What? What was your point there? What was your point? He goes to his date's house to pick her up, and she's a real treat. Uh, good evening. I'm... Reese's bitch. Celia. Relax. He knows I'm kidding. Right, Slim? I get what they're going for here. Sierra Burgess was meant to be relatable to girls who are... <clears throat> bubbly. Elle was meant to appeal to plain, ordinary girls who think they deserve to get with the hottest guy at school despite being plain and ordinary. And Celia is the I'm not like other girls kind of girl. The type who claims to be unique because she looks like she was dressed by a blind octopus and thinks she's clever and independent because she acts like a total bitch. You are. Aw, that's cute. But I can open my own doors. It's meant to be a stark contrast to Noah's efforts to fake being the perfect gentleman for their date, when what she really appreciates is honesty. Do you think they're gonna end up together? There you go, saved you 90 minutes. She's so unique and special that she'd rather spend hours by herself at a cafe bookstore. Which does sound more fun than a formal high school dance, to be fair but he insists on taking her to the dance. He does his best to make it fun for her, while she does her best to keep being miserable. During an awkward slow dance, he catches a glimpse of Shelby, the popular hot girl he wants to use as a status symbol and a dick sheath. And yes, she does turn out to be a stuck-up c**t, because this is a teen movie. While thinking with his smaller head, he makes Celia twist her ankle. Because of this, he can't go to Shelby's after party. And then just to rub it in, Celia cock blocks him even harder. What do you say there, Brooksy? My boyfriend, my protector, my forever love. Should we get the hell moving? I need a baby in a gas mask. Ah, uh, street art is a public disservice. Hey, don't you diss my boy Wanksy. That guy's a f***ing hero. He's just some bored, privileged white dude. I know it. And you're not? She then admits that she made up the injury to get out of the dance. This is who he's going to end up with? Okay... Based on the knight's experience, he decides to make this paid date idea into a real moneymaker. What was it about the thoroughly unpleasant time you just had that made you want to keep doing this? Oh right, the money. The thing is, he's poor, and he hates the fact that he's poor, and he wants to do everything in his power to not be poor. Which is where the app comes in. He decides to sell himself to women for dates, plus one occasions, whatever they need, and he will be whatever they want him to be. In other words, the perfect date. He's a prostitute, basically. That is, in essence, what he's doing. Prostitution, but without the mess. That's all in the past, because you're a hooker now. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm, uh, I'm... Uh, guess that makes me your pimp. A high-tech pimp, but a pimp nonetheless. He gets his friend, who's a coding genius, to make the app through which he'll sell his services, and he plans to use the money to pay his way through Yale. His dad tells him he got a place at Yukon, but again, he's like, no, dad, I'm not staying poor, f*** you. So cue a montage of him going on dates, pretending to be a whole bunch of personalities depending on what the women need. Well, this morning I did see a very large man walking a very tiny dog. Oh my god, I... I love it when that happens. Me too! Yes, this is exactly what women love. Being lied to. Celia calls him to offer a bitchy apology, then to ask for his help with a crush. She wants him to go as her date to a party at Shelby's house in order to make her crush jealous. Just gonna get real for a second. Ladies, don't do this. We hate it when you do stuff like this. And Noah knows this, so he tries to get her to just go up and talk to him. I like music and records. Me too. I mean, vinyl's the only pure delivery method, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm always saying that. 
which partly serves as an excuse to get away and talk to Shelby, who's only interested in him because he's pretending to be rich. Now, I ain't saying that she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke nigga. In gratitude for his help in getting her a date with the disc jockey, Celia promises to get her dad, who knows the president of Yale, to help Noah get in, teaching kids that it's all about the nepotism. Harsh, but true. Then we get what was definitely the highlight of the film for me. He pretends to be a douche. I see some of the finest bitches in the world every damn day, and Pops, I gotta tell you, with the utmost respect, your daughter, she has got to be one of the finest bitches I have ever seen in my entire life. And I've been to the Westminster Dog Show, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll give him that one. That was pretty funny. Thanks to Celia's connections, he gets an interview with the Dean of Yale, which he bullshits his way through by pretending to be a beekeeper? Well, I used to be all about the Russian bees. But then I found that their swarminess tended to be a little too, uh... Unpredictable. Unpredictable. That's right, that's right. So now I'm a buckfast man all the way. He could have just told him about the app. I'm pretty sure that's more interesting. But in his mind, it's worth lying in order to get in. With all that money, he should have just paid his way in, like any decent deserving candidate. Celia criticizes him for trying to lie his way in, but he's like, Yeah, but you're lying to get into this guy's pants. She can't handle the truth, and storms off. During the awkward car ride home, she admits that the reason she's mean and pushes people away is because she's too scared to show people who she really is. What a fucking shocker! The app gets pretty much entirely forgotten about during this middle third of the film, and coincidentally, this was also when I started to get really bored. Noah's friend starts acting like a whiny little bitch because he's not spending as much time with him as he did before, even going so far as to quit his job at Discount Subway and call him a selfish prick. This despite this friend knowing exactly what he's been doing and that he's been doing it to raise money to go to the university of his dreams and he built the app for him for f**k's sake, why is he now getting upset? Celia goes on her date with the disc jockey, still pretending that Noah is her boyfriend, which she needn't have bothered doing because he turns out to be the street artist she took the piss out of earlier, and he's a wee bit pretentious. You know I did like, that baby in a gas mask, and then I did like an old man in a gas mask. Oh yeah. Right now I am working on something that is going to blow those away. A cat in a gas mask. It's a commentary on itself and on Dr. Seuss. I mean, cats don't wear hats. What did you expect from a guy who's that into vinyl? She still insists to Noah that they have their fake breakup in public. So he goes through with it, but goes through with it a bit too hard, gets a bit too personal, and makes her cry. Oh, you know what they say, go hard or go home. He's too oblivious to realise the damage he's just done, and now he's free to pursue Hot Bitch, so he's all good. And he does not waste any time, the f***ing man whore. But then he goes on a date with Hot Bitch, who turns out to be very judgmental and high maintenance. Naturally. She finds out about the app because the girl he helped with dating practice earlier is at the dance they go to, and she is not happy about him lying in order to impress her or about him being poor. He tries his luck with Celia, but because she doesn't want to be anybody's sloppy seconds, and because we got another 20 minutes to fill, she says no. He reconciles with his dad, and they have a conversation about finding out who you really are. Get it? Because he's been pretending to be other people in order to make money? Just trust me guys, it's profound. It's, it's profound guys, just trust me. He also makes up with his friend, after his friend stops being a whingy turd. He meets Celia for coffee and tells her he stopped using the app. He's keeping the money, I guess. He says he wants her to review his application for Yale, but then he reveals that he's going to Yukon instead because the true Yale he was searching for was inside of him all along. <laughs> nah, but it could be true, and that is my point. He's realised that if he had to lie to get into somewhere, he probably doesn't belong there. But he lied to her to get her to be there? So he's not really learned anything. He leaves her to read the letter, and it turns out to be an application for entry to her vagina. I'm only half joking. He admits that he's been a bit of a douche, pretending to be other people in order to achieve his goal of not being poor and ordinary, but the only times he felt like he was truly being himself was when he was with her. They reconcile, and she takes him to the subway ripoff that they've decorated to look like a formal, just to rub in the fact that he's still poor. His friend is going to the same university as him, and the gay romance subplot, which was also a thing, by the way, worked out quite nicely for him. Question is, which one's the sub, and which one's the sub-sub? 
I am so sorry. They make out and dance. Badly. And the film ends. Finally. So yeah, it's not awful, but it's nothing special either. This kind of bog-standard Netflix teen romance is such low-hanging fruit that I almost felt guilty about making fun of it. Although having said that, the film does have its good points. The banter is endearing and fairly well written. The gay romance subplot is a perfect example of how to do diversity, in that it's treated no differently from a straight romance and they never make a big deal of it. And the film has enough self-awareness to make jokes about Noah essentially being a hooker, and about there being so many parties and dances at this one high school. In sum, it's perfect for a Netflix and chill night, in the sense that forcing yourself to sit through it for the sake of your partner is worth at least a handjob. Thanks for watching, folks. Big shout out to all of my lovely supporters on Patreon. If you like my videos and want to support my channel more directly, consider becoming a patron yourself. Subscribe for more content, be sure to follow me on stuff for updates, and feel free to join my public Discord server. Links to all that stuff are down below. Thanks again, folks, and I'll see you next time.